Witness the exact moments police knew Chris Watts was guilty in his young family's disappearance, as Chris narrates to you how he claims he did it in his full detailed confession. But is he still lying that it was not premeditated? Find out next. Welcome back to the channel, Shakers. Dark Man Shake here. As many of you now know, Chris Watts is the Northern Colorado man who pled guilty to murdering his pregnant wife and two young daughters on the morning of August 13th, 2018. In my last two videos on the Chris Watts case, we called out Chris Watts' guilty body language of how police immediately knew he was involved in his family's disappearance. We then followed that up by breaking down FBI interrogation tactics used to get Chris to finally admit his involvement and revealing where his family can be found. His pregnant wife was found in a shallow grave and his two young daughters were found dumped in oil tanks. Chris Watts was handcuffed in the interrogation room. I'm going to have you face that wall. Sent to jail. You know that big blue door right there? Finally pled guilty and was sentenced to many lifetimes in prison on November 19th, 2018. Life sentence, life, a life, life, 48 years, 12 years each for those counts. However, Chris never revealed how it all happened at the time he was sentenced. You have the right to make a statement if you choose to. Would you like to make a statement? So on February 18th, 2019, the three who interrogated him, Graham Coder with the FBI. How is it possible that a woman and two kids are just completely gone off the face of the earth? What happened? Tammy Lee with the CBI. So yeah. <laughs> you obviously are a really bad liar. I didn't lie to you on that polygraph, I promise. And Dave Baumhofer, Frederick PD detective. I'm going to try to run some things down using her phone. Visited Chris Watts in a Wisconsin prison to hear him reveal in shocking detail how he claims it all happened. Hey, Chris. Chris. Do you remember us? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. I see. I just stood here a moment there. We saw you last. You were talking and talking and talking um, about your family, about your parents, about everyone. And then the next thing you know, for me and Tammy and for Dave, all of a sudden some patrol officers came in and arrested you. And that was far quicker than we had hoped it would happen. However, was Crystal lying to save what's left of his reputation to make it seem like it was all done in rage and was not premeditated? We're going to piece together Chris's shocking audio confession matched to the police's body camera footage combined with breaking down verbal dynamics and body language to finally reveal what actually happened. It's not fair to Shanann, Bella, Celeste, and Unborn Nico that Chris Watts, the guy who committed the crimes, gets to possibly rewrite history most favorable to himself. I'm going to do my best to give the murder victims a voice to reveal what actually happened on that terrible morning of August 13th, 2018. Now, let's get started. Nothing really happened that night, at least in the morning. She got home like at 2 o'clock. I just had a feeling that she knew like what was going on. Cole Atkinson or Cassie probably told her, you know, that's what I was thinking, right? They talked about it during that whole weekend. They all kind of just told her he's with somebody else. Hello, County Communications. This is Stacey. Hi, Stacey. My name's Nicole, and I'm calling because I'm concerned about a friend of mine. I dropped her off at her house at 2 in the morning last night because we were out of town together, and we were on the way back from the airport. She's pregnant, and I haven't been able to get a hold of her this morning, and I've gone to her house, and her car is there, and stuff like that, but she won't answer the door, she won't answer phone calls, she won't answer text messages, and I'm just really, really concerned, and she had a doctor's appointment this morning, and she didn't go to it, and I'm just, I don't know what to do. I've called him and talked to him, and he said that she went on a play date with her other two daughters. Alrighty, we do have a call in. Nicole, we'll have an officer come out that way as soon as we can. 2825, Sarah took a trail of a party who's checking on a friend who's pregnant who's not answering the door. How you guys doing? Brother? What's that? Do you remember me? Yeah. Hey, man. Ben, How you been? Hi. You Nicole? Yes. Nicole Atkinson. Yeah, when she was there. Yeah, when she at my house, sitting at the door, Bella's yeah. friend who came up at the house. Did you think right then, like, oh, f like, here we go? Or what were you thinking about? I, I didn't know why she was there. Keep in mind, those who lie, including scum like Chris Watts, won't lie about everything they say. It's exhausting, dangerous, inefficient, and not necessary to lie about everything. Instead, they'll lie about specific things that are beneficial to themselves. Okay. What's going on? So, my friend, um, we were out of town for a business trip this weekend. Right. And I dropped her off at 2 o'clock this morning. She's 15 weeks pregnant. She wasn't feeling well. And she had a doctor's appointment this morning at 9, and I told her to let me know if she needed me to take her. She's got two little girls. 
and um, she was very distraught over the weekend, wasn't eating normally or drinking, and we kept trying to force it on her because she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, her husband and her supposedly are separating, but she didn't know this. She thought they were just having issues. He disclosed that to me today. Because okay. I called him, and I was like, have you talked or heard from Shanann since she left for work this morning? Because I can't get a hold of her. I've called. I've texted. Her car's in the garage. Her shoes she wears every single day are by the front door. She only has one vehicle? No, they only have the one vehicle and a work truck. Okay, that's what I'm asking. There's not a girl that went on a play date, but they're four and two. She went on a play date. Why wouldn't she take in a car? They're both in car seats. And Bella's so sweet, playing with her baby. And she had a doctor's appointment this morning at nine, and she didn't go to the doctor's appointment. Okay, no answer on the phone. Husband's on his way. Minnie Mouse out there for Christmas. But it's been absolutely gorgeous here in Colorado, like always. Supposedly, but he said that 30 minutes ago when I called him and then he said he was 45 minutes out still. I was like, I didn't know, like, maybe, maybe she had an appointment or something with Shannon. I, I didn't know. Oh. As you're now noticing, we're piecing together Chris's full detailed confession with the police's body camera footage. So we can now hear his behind the scenes narration of what he claims happened that day. Also, no, we will not be clipping Chris's audio confession out of context. Our goal in all of this is to arrive at the truth. And I know the code is the door. You do? I do, but there's a thing on it. There's a, no, it'll, you know, Chris, everything you do it. There's a, they have the thing flipped up here. Chris locked the house from the inside. He was surely hoping to do some last minute cleanup that he thought of while at work. Do you mind calling him and seeing if we can get a passcode to this and get my permit, give him, get me permission to go in? Okay. I'm just going to check the back, see if I can see anything. What did you think like that day, like what you were going to say? Like what was your plan? Were you just going to go home and be like, report to the police that your family's gone or? signs of yep I, i've got to have more unless i get consent from him to go in um. and if you don't you can't you can enter <laughs> oh no 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 i got a phone like once i had no idea what was going to happen you've got your fourth minute rights to the house yeah um i can't violate that how you doing yeah, you seen your neighbors today Meet neighbor Nate. You'll see a lot more of him soon. No? Okay. Why, what's going on? Oh, we're just trying to get a hold of her. Sounded like she wasn't feeling too good and pregnant and they were just concerned. No, I know he, he works in the oil field, so he's on certain days and off for... You didn't see her today, though, any outside or anything? Her at all. Okay. That's, that, that's not anything. So. Right. Don't be yeah, I think she's diabetic, to be honest with you. Who called me? Shannon was at her girlfriend's house. Do we know who that is? Do we know who? Her phone number? He didn't say. When did he tell you that? He needs Chris is acting funny. I don't, I don't get it. What did he say? He told me that Shanann didn't take the girls to school this morning because she was going to go on a play date, but her car's here. Shanann's friends and family are noticing that Chris's story seems inconsistent which is very typical of someone who is lying. Liar stories will sometimes be slightly inconsistent each time they tell it because it's based on their floaty imagination and not their solid memory. Hey guys. Hold on, I'm just hopping outside right quick. What's Chris's phone number? 1702. Hey Chris, Officer Coonrod for the police department. Pretty good. So, do you have any idea where your wife is? Okay. Right, well, my concern is her car is here, they're saying she is diabetic, I don't want her, if she's upstairs and can't respond. Okay, about how far out are you? Okay, all right. He said like five minutes. So he's about here. 
Matthews. He's told us 45 minutes two times in a row. Because he told one of our one of my mom's friends that he was on I-45, so it the interstate pretty much. Mm -hmm. And he and we waited the time we were told the mom called again. He said he was still on it and to wait another 45 minutes. So he's just been giving us false times and everything. We thought we saw some GPS where you would stop by near construction. A uh, roll off dumpster? Is that true or? I think yeah, I think that's like I dumped my clothes in there. Now we find out why Chris was giving false times to those waiting on him at his house. Chris was surely trying to find a place to change his clothes and then dump those clothes, which had DNA evidence on them, since he was wearing those clothes when he committed and covered up the crimes earlier that morning. I mean, we know he's been lying because his stories aren't adding up. So is that what been on the way back to the house? Yeah. My neighborhood. Yeah. When Officer Kunov is there? Okay. I don't see anything out of place. I'm not hearing kids. I'm not hearing anything. No, it's easy. Clean up. Remember, clean up. Is it one of those red construction dumpsters? More than likely. Okay. What's um, Shannon's number? Did you pack new clothes? How did that work? I already have some in there. I have like two pairs of boots, uh, and all kinds of different stuff in there. I don't hear the phone ring or anything. The neighbor has a, a camera system. Mm hmm. And he um, he said, because um, we have one story, she's out, she's with a friend right now, and then there's another story, she's on a play date with her kids with another friend, and then she left in the middle of the night. So he's told us three different stories. So he, the neighbor over there said he has cam he has a camera that they that sees no out in the street. We asked him if he could see if he was able to see if she ever left the house. Shannon, are you home? This kid keeps me going. Police department, if anyone's inside, make yourself known! Is that airplane? <gasps> Police department, if anyone's inside, make yourself known! <laughs> Is that Bella? Yeah, you'd think they were here, the kids or someone would respond, though. You'd hear some kind of noise. I don't think Chris is coming. Scott, how you doing? When you came home, How's going? so this is after they had passed, and you came home and met with Officer Coonrod. So this is the only vehicle she would have? Only one that, yeah. She would drive? Okay. One of the first things we see on the video is you walking into the garage and then into the uh, Shanann's car. Remember what that was about? In your car? Yeah, you open the passenger door, and it looks like you're looking for something, or maybe you pick something up. Do you recall what that was? Not that I'm aware of, not like... Not looking for anything, but maybe just opening the car door to see if, like, see if it's her. Because uh, I think Nikki was saying, I think I see the car seat still in there. Yeah. Something like that. And I was, okay. uh, when I opened up the door, I looked in just to, uh, it's like the first, like, reaction of, like, whatever. Everybody's just waiting, pretty much waiting to get in the house. Right, right. Okay. So I didn't, I wasn't, like, looking for anything as far as specific or anything, but I was just. I don't know, just reaction going in there, and, and I know everybody's there. I don't know what's going to happen when they sure. the house. It's out of nervousness, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of it was out of nervousness. Sure. Okay. He may have dropped something out of nervousness or carry the garage door opener into the house out of nervousness, but this is just bad acting. That's, That's me. Thank you. Yeah. The neighbors went and checked his camera, and he said that a white car drove away at one. It was me, though. That was me, I dropped her off. That was the last action on my camera. Okay. And that's throughout the whole day, or? Besides uh, Chris leaving? Well, yeah. I just got me in the middle of the night. What about the, you know, there's no way you can look for the day? During the daytime? Yeah. Right, when you got back there and Coonrod was there, Officer Coonrod and Nicole was there. Mm -hmm. And then you went in the house in here for about a minute or so before you let everybody in. Remember what you were doing in there at that time? I was, so I went into the garage. Right. And then I ran around and I opened the front door. Yeah. Opened the front door for, did everybody come in through the garage or the front door? Everybody came through the front door. Matter if I come in, Chris? Yeah, so I came in, I went in through there, and I came in, opened the front door, and I ran upstairs. I just was like, I was looking around. That's after everybody? Did you go around the house at all before you opened the front door? No, no I, didn't, I didn't run around the house. I stayed down the bottom, okay. on the bottom floor, and then yeah. when I opened the door. 
Did you notice how he sped up his speaking along with an odd nervous stutter when he denied the big implied allegation that he may have done some last minute cleanup when he was in the house alone? You go around the house at all before you open the front door? No, uh, I, didn't, I didn't run around the house. I sat down on the bottom, okay. on the bottom floor, and then yeah. ran open the door. It would take 10 seconds max to go from the garage door to the front door to let everyone in. So of course Chris did some last minute checking, clean up, and cover up while he knew he was in the house all alone. You checked upstairs, he's not there. I just want to make sure he's not passed out somewhere. And if you notice, Chris is pacing nervously in the kitchen, so he's not in that concerned husband character of looking under tables and beds. He's surely now even more nervous because he has a police officer at his crime scene and is nervous that he may have left something behind. Is she diabetic? No, uh, she's not. Pizzas? Yeah. 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 Pizzas here? Where is it? Right there. Are you excited? Yes. It's pizza. Yes, pizza's here. How many pieces are you going to have? You mind if I look around? <laughs> Whether Chris realizes it or not, getting away with murder in your own home is extraordinarily difficult because it's an isolated place that will be investigated thoroughly. What a novice may not realize is evidence combined with other evidence may turn out to be bombshell evidence. Also, detectives analyze crimes for a living, so they have a lot more experience to outsmart a rookie criminal like Chris here. There was a lot of movement, you know, I think it was around 426. The garage door opening, the basement door opening, and then of course the living room sensors and all. Do you remember what you were doing all during that time? Do you remember going down there for anything or opening that door for anything? I don't remember about the basement. Unless there was a trash bag down there at that time. You got trash bags in there? Maybe. Maybe, maybe there wasn't any in the garage and I went down there and got one. Do you normally carry a roll of trash bags in your truck? No. Okay. So there was a roll in your truck? There was? Yeah. I mean, maybe I just grabbed it and brought it with me then. That would have been kept in the basement maybe? Or the basement or the garage. Or the garage. We're checking the house for consent. Down her phone. Oh. Wasn't her phone found on the couch or between the couch cushions? <laughs> like, did you plant all that stuff? I just threw it in there. You just threw it yeah, in there? Yeah, I, I, I why, was, why did you do that? I don't know what was going on that morning. Um, any friends she, that you know she would be hanging out with? I mean, I know, I guess her, Amanda, her, her uh, parents are out parents of state. Across, across country, North Carolina. Oh. Yeah, so that's not happening. She can play with All the girls blankies are gone. Um. Their blankie they sleep with. Here we go. By saying that, he's trying to draw attention away from his house, making it seem like Shanann took the kids and left him because that's basically his alibi story. Shanann got mad at him, left the country, changed their names, and now is living in a new country under new identities. Yeah, completely bogus, but it's just proof of just how stupid Chris Watts is. Nothing else appears to be missing, though. Just no, stuff you'd take for a quick trip. The phone and her watch in the couch was that that morning before you left to go to service? Okay. Yeah, so I think uh, Nicole's son found it or something. Yeah. Her phone's here? Yeah. Okay. Her phone's here. Does she work? Yeah, she works from home. Oh, from home? She works, this is her lifeline. It was shut down? She's in the fire. Yeah. Do you know her passcode? Um, I don't know her passcode. It used to be 2385, but now it's six digits. It's the baby's due date. What does she do for work? She works a uh, direct sales company called Drive. She flew out to Arizona Friday, Friday morning, and then she got back last night. About 2 a.m. The flight got delayed. She left about 11. She got here at 2. Okay. And I went to work this morning about 5.15, 5.30. Yeah, she said she was at a friend's house. That's what she told me she was going to do. I have no clue at whatsoever why she wouldn't take her cell phone. I'm not a lost boy. I don't know. I don't know where she's at, where the kids are at. I had no idea what was going to happen. Like, after everything, I mean, I don't even know how I was even acting even normal to people that I was around. The uh, guy with the camera said nobody left the house during the day. The only people that showed up in the driveway and injured it were us. I can look. What's that? Your neighbor, camera. Your neighbor? Yes, camera. She said that the only people that left the house were you in the morning and then they were shut up.
Yeah. 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 They now find out that there's no video evidence of his wife or kids leaving the house. And the last person to see her and the kids was Chris, who saw them in the house that day. But notice Chris's response. Right, he brushes off that critical, monumental information, not only because it makes him look very guilty, but also because there's a police officer standing right there who has a set of handcuffs waiting for him. At this point, Officer Coonrod seems to know that Chris isn't acting right at all and seems to give him a little test to see how guilty Chris actually feels. Watch. Dispatch for 91. You can cancel me. Look at that guilty look on his face. He surely thought Officer Coonrod was radioing him in to arrest him right there. We talk a lot about Chris Watts' guilty body language in my Police Catch Chris Watts with Body Language video, but I just had to call it out again here because it actually looked like Chris just pooped his pants. Medical third stage. Look at Chris. He's not looking anywhere or frantically calling anyone. Nah, he's just basically texting someone. Who, you may ask? Surely someone very special to him. You're so damn sexy. Did you talk to um, Nikki afterwards, after all this happened? Yeah, 13th and 14th. What was that conversation like? It was the 13th, it was kind of like, you know, it was more text, and then maybe a phone call, like a phone call. She was just, she thought maybe she had, like, took off with the kids. Like, just, you know, because I, I was telling her I didn't know where they were and all that. And then the 14th, she kind of, like, I think she kind of thought something may have happened because they hadn't come back. So, what time do you work? Chris not only failed Officer Coonrod's guilt test, but is also acting guilty by not trying anything to get his family back. So now Officer Coonrod starts asking him questions to find out more about what's really going on. Usually, I, when I, once I get to work, it's like 6.30 to 3.30, 4 o'clock. You usually work nights or days? Days. What time do you leave the day? What time do I leave there? Come no, here. here. Uh, usually between 5.30 and 6. All right. And more Shannon here then? Yes. Yeah, we're shooting from that. The community pool, a very logical place, right? People don't always bring their cell phones. People typically don't wear that much to the pool. But Chris doesn't cease to amaze us of how stupid he is. Watch. At the pool? Yeah. The little rec center thing right here. There's a pool right down there. Yeah. I mean, I've been here for like off and on for three hours. Here, you're not going to go. All right, I can run down there and check. You guys have any kind of issues, marital issues, or? Right, he says he's going to go down there and check, but doesn't check, and just seems to be like, guys, stop bothering me when I'm texting my girlfriend. We're going through separation. You are. Did you guys file yet or anything, or are you just talking about? No, we're gonna. I won't. We're gonna sell the house and do a separation. How's that going? I uh, we're gonna sell the house and do a separation. Civil for the most Civil. part. Or? At this point, Officer Coonrod surely knows that Chris doesn't want his family back. Keep in mind, too, this is not just his wife that left him. And if they were headed for a divorce, then maybe he's happy she ran away. No, his kids are missing, too, and he's acting like this. These are all major red flags, and it's very obvious he's not upset they're gone and seems he doesn't want them back. Does your wife go to that swim, that swim pool often, or...? Um, it just depends. I mean, on a hot day like this, I would say no. Yeah, okay, Chris. Like they would go swimming on a cold day. He just doesn't want to walk outside in the August heat. It's shocking how stupid Chris is, right? Did he really think he can just say, I don't know where my family's at, text his girlfriend, and all of this would just blow over so we can live a fresh start without a wife and kids? It's really shocking, right? How stupid anyone can be. What about her ring and stuff? What were you thinking about that? It's like, you no. Know, maybe she wanted... Maybe she actually really wanted the divorce. Maybe she didn't want to fix it. Just put it there on the counter. She took it off? I took it off. Okay. It was on the night stand. I'm not sure if that was it. Took it off when she was in it. Picked up the clothes here. Oh, so that would look like she was saying, I want a divorce. I'm leaving it here when I'm taken off. I see. Does she do her work from a laptop or is it just phone? Phone. just from the phone? Clearly, Chris doesn't want his family back. So Officer Coonrod starts gathering more information on the situation because whether Chris likes it or not, his family needs to be found. Not a joint account. It's a joint account, but like 
she controls all of it. Chris's bogus excuses are so ridiculous, right? And did you notice him flash that duping smile there? It's a joint account, but like, she controls all of it. I don't have the login to our joint bank account, so I guess that can't be used to find them. Oh, well. I have the apps on my phone, but I don't have her login. Call the number on the back of your bank card then. Does he really think this is how a father who wants his family back would act? I don't know her login. Like, I know the password, but I don't know her login. What other things did you do that maybe we even missed? I got through the therapy book she wanted me to read in the trash. And there was no note or anything by the wedding ring. Is there any of her clothes or anything like that missing? It didn't look like she went through and packed up no, I a mean, bag or anything. Missed. She tell you anything about leaving, moving out? Not moving out. I mean, the last time I talked to her was this morning. She said she's going to take the kids to a friend's house, and she asked where she was going to be. And then I've texted her today. I've never heard anything. But the car's, the car's here. The car's right. here. Unless somebody came and picked her up. But the people that I know, nobody's heard from her. Nobody's seen her. Right. Anything is smart, just go just drive around, see if I, I mean, yeah, probably not. Cause More massive duping delight, surely thinking, I can't believe I'm getting away with this. That's how stupid he is. He thinks he's doing a good job. He thinks he's convincing everybody that he's completely innocent. He's just going to get away with it. No, Chris, you're actually just too stupid to realize that everyone's actually on to you. I mean, you don't know what car she's in, where she's at. I mean, obviously, you're not going to see her. I've got my detective coming, okay. just because this is kind of an odd situation. I didn't know what was going to happen. Like, like I said, this wasn't like something like some criminal minds type. Like well thought yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't nothing like that. It was minute by minute at that point. Yeah, it was, I had no idea what, what was going on. Tell them I'll be there in just a minute. Now they all go over to neighbor Nate's house to watch the security camera footage for the very first time. What's that? Nothing on there. You just have my camera. camera. Lay down. I'm loading my stuff up in my coolers, my water jugs, my book bag, my computers, some of the tools that I have from the toolbox. I knew I was going to have to do some pumping, pumping into rubbers today. That's why I was out so far. Is this on continually yep. recording? Yep. Well, it's not. Is it motion, motion or is it? Event. Okay, so it's motion. Any motion event that happens, I got, but I get cars driving from this street, from this street. And this is him at 517. This part is so unbelievable. Chris is watching himself for the first time cover up his crimes with a police officer watching with him. Keep in mind too, this is just six hours later. Yeah, Chris is about to poop his pants again. Dude, park out there on the side. I just want to get everything back in. It'd be easier to lug everything out there, all the tools that I had to bring in. Everything in I think I saw on the video that you put a gas can or something in the back of your truck. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Did you have different plans was, when you put that in there? I don't know what was going through my head. I felt like I maybe I could just get rid of myself at the same time if I was doing all this, honestly. What did you think about that? I felt like I deserved to live after what had happened. Was there any thought to the whole family going away that day? You. After everything happened, that's definitely thought. Did you just hear what Chris said? Let all of that sink in now, and we'll come back to it in part two of this series. Honestly, I just felt like I didn't. I didn't what else can I do with this? Um, my detective just showed up. Um, so he'll probably want to talk to you. He'd probably, like I said, he might have you call at the bank and see if there's any kind of activity. Because if there is any sort of action out there, of his cameras, like, I would have got it. Like right. had, I had, we had issues the other other week when people were coming, were stealing stuff out of like garages and stuff like that. And I have parked my truck. I right had here. park right here. Yeah. Oh, it'll pick up anything coming down the street this way. You know where that trigger is? Oh yeah. Okay. 
I would have caught her walking out. Nothing for the rest of the day. Pregnant as well. How far along? 14, 15 weeks. I watched that video of you finding out that Shanann was pregnant. We did it again. <laughs> I like that shirt. Yes, sir. Guess, guess when you want to, it happens. Wow. Yeah, that's not exactly the smile you want your partner to have when you tell him you're pregnant. That's an eek expression with his mouth pulled back and down a little. And he's also checking the test, surely in disbelief, wanting it not to be true. Also, when I hit play, notice his shoulders rise in subconscious self-defense, along with his stiff, apprehensive walk towards her. You don't seem excited. You seem like kind of in shock. Scared. And yeah, like, oh, like, well, it's, it's already complicated and now this. It's just like, it was more of like, surprise, scared, I'm like, wait, what? Like, we, we, just, we, just, yeah. we just talked about this. You just didn't seem happy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I haven't like, I don't remember the video much. I know she was wearing like a, oops, we did it again shirt, I think. And I was walking out with my cooler or something. Mm -hmm. and I don't remember like my actual like reaction, like watching the video, but like, I could see. I could see her eyes see her like a, it didn't seem like he was jumping for joy type thing. Yeah, it didn't seem like that. Maybe I already felt guilty about talking to Nikki at work. Chris does not want her to be pregnant and sadly seems to be a major motive in what he did. Yeah. Maybe, I, maybe that was going through my head. All right, appreciate your time. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Hopefully something comes up here. Yeah. Matter of fact, you just want to go talk to him, I'm going to get his info real quick. That's right, neighbor Nate was observing Chris's body language and comparing that to a baseline of how he normally acts and notices he's not acting right. No. Right. Right. If he loads his stuff, he normally just walks back and forth because I get him on camera. What, what does he usually load up? All he usually has is a lunch box and a book bag. Looks like a computer. And usually a water jug. That's it. But the fact that he was in here and explaining to it over and over and over. Well, I'm um, loading my stuff up in my coolers, my water jugs, book bag, my computers, some of the tools that I have in the toolbox. I knew I was going to have to do some pumping, pumping into rubbers today, but I was out so far. I usually park out there on the side. I just want to get everything back in. It'd be easier to lug everything out there, all the tools that I had to bring in. He doesn't look worried. He looks like he's trying to cover his track. And if he's loading his stuff, why isn't he walking back and forth? But I can't see what he's doing in the back of the truck because he pulls into the garage. Yeah. Like he knows my camera's there. I had your park right here. Yeah. So you someone, see if I can see where someone tried to jimmy with a flathead screwdriver. It's kind of odd that he pulls his truck back behind my camera. The cut off, the, the truck's in the garage right now. Yeah. And he never backs his truck into the driveway. That's what Suspicious. You can ask them, he's normally quiet, real subdued. So the fact that he's over here blabbing his mouth makes me kind of suspicious. Why is he so worried about you knowing what he's carrying out? He's talking to him right now? Okay. Chris? Yeah. Hey, are you okay if we just walk through? Yeah. yeah. And then look at her phone if he's still yeah. up there? Yeah. Okay. I guess. Do you have any current pictures of her? This trip's pretty recent. That was last year. She started rubbing her hand on me and we ended up having sex. I guess that was more like a test. Well, I, I would have thought. Interesting. Okay. I know it's hard, but do you mind if we talk just a tiny bit deeper about that? 
She comes home at 2 in the morning. Shanann got home at 1.48 to be exact. Chris was seen coming out of his house at 5.17 that morning. Therefore, there's basically only 3 hours and 29 minutes that's in question. We're not talking about a large 10-hour gap here. There is not a lot of time for supposedly a lot of things to have happened. We're going to piece this together. She gets into bed. When you guys had sex together, was that pretty quickly after she came home? I think it was around like 2.30 because she, I felt like she'd be in bed for, for a little while. A little bit. Okay. Chris said before that he would sleep in the basement because he wanted to distance himself from his wife. So why would he be sleeping in her bed that night if he knew that she was coming home soon? And remember, her flight was delayed coming out of Phoenix, so he was originally expecting her several hours earlier. I feel like a hand was on okay. me, like rubbing my leg or my chest or something okay. like that. And then that was, you know, signal it's go time type thing? Pretty much. Okay. She was like, yeah. So she comes home, uh, you guys have sex, and then did you fall asleep between then and going to work? Yes. Okay. So then at some point, does she wake you up or did he wake you up for work? Not a lot more. Oh. This is major right here. Chris just said that his alarm woke him up for work, which means everything is on track for a more normal day where he leaves the house between 5.30 and 6 a.m. Between 5.30 and 6. Do any of you know where I'm going with this? Let's keep listening. I had gotten dressed for work and then like we started talking. Did she come to you? No, I was, I was just right there in bed. Oh, just, okay. Yeah. I was just like, I got my blue shirt on, I'm not changing and everything. You ready to go? I was ready to go. It's like when I got into bed, I just pretty because she was laying, when she, when she was sleeping, she was laying like face down. I got into bed and I kind of nudged her and then she like kind of rolled over and then I was just like, just like right there on top of her. Okay. And so that was after you'd gotten ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you go down, you make your food. Oh yeah, I got like house cheese and another cup of uh, okay. food that day. Okay. Chris did his entire morning ritual of getting ready, getting dressed, packing his lunch, and now he's all ready to go to work, but decides to talk to Shanann a bit. He should be talking to Shanann around 5.30 a.m. because that's on the early part of the range of when he's about to go to work. And this is him at 5.17. His truck had the lights on, which is unusual for that point, you know, 5.15 in the morning. Only fools like me are up. <laughs> so you don't usually see him leave at that time of day? That was his regular truck. It's a pretty big truck. An F-250 pickup. Pick yeah. More on this timeline later in this video. We talked a little bit earlier today about, you know, there was all of these things playing in your mind where you just didn't even want to go another second without having this conversation or without some sort of completion, right? Mm -hmm. And then so you come back, she's asleep, and then you just kind of nudge her. But yeah, I just kind of like, hey. Okay. For and was there nudge talk for 20 minutes or was it just nudge and then all of a sudden you're on top of her? No, it's pretty much on top. Okay, so that happened pretty quickly. Yeah, it was that's how we kind of pretty much talked. Okay. That was just right there. Why did you get on her like that? I just, when we got off, when we got on the bed, that's, that's just what I got on. Is that so she would listen to you? I felt like she could probably listen to me just laying beside her, but I got on top of her. Mm -hmm. And every time I think about it, I'm just like, did I know I was going to do that before I got on top of her? Really? That's an interesting thought, Chris. Mm -hmm. You don't know if you do. I, I crawled back. I got on my side of the bed. Uh huh. And I just like nudged her like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then you're talking while you're on top of her? Mm -hmm. Okay. That seems confusing to me. Is that actually what happened? Yeah, that's bogus, right? You can all envision this in your mind's eye, or maybe you've actually done this in your life. Your partner is sleeping, something is bothering you, you nudge them, they turn over on their side, and you both talk on your sides facing each other. But Chris claims that he nudged her, and as soon as she was turning over, and remember she's pregnant, he jumps on her, straddling her. Um, and so... And she, she was just, fine, like, just laying there, like, you trying to talk to her while you're on top of her? She maybe, I thought we were going on a second. Oh, okay. Uh, Did you notice how quickly Chris tries to defend his bogus claim in convincing and not just conveying? That's not what an authentically truthful person would say in what seems to be a very odd situation. We would expect something like, you know, that is kind of weird. Why would she be okay with me straddling her like that just to casually talk so early in the morning? Okay. And how long did you talk? About 15, 20 minutes. Really? In that position? Okay. And was there any sex? No. Okay. Maybe she, um, basically. And I don't want to harp on it too much, but I'm just trying to think if my wife's four months pregnant and it's five o'clock in the morning and I want to talk and I want to get on top of her, that's just not going to fly. 
So that's why I'm confused. So is that really what happened? Yeah. Okay. Also, Chris is in his mid-30s, and she knows he's going to work at this point. And a nudge in the back isn't exactly for a play. As you can see, it makes no sense that she would think that he would want to do it again by him straddling her like that. So there's no logical reason why she would be okay with him jumping on her like some monkey so early in the morning. He seems to be lying about this. But the bigger question is, why? So when I woke her up, and it's like, hey, we just gotta, just gotta talk. Okay. And I just like, I told her, I don't feel compatible. I don't feel like this is gonna work. She didn't wash her face when she got home. She had makeup on still, so mascara was running all over her and stuff like that. When did it turn? Just at the end when I was telling her, like, I, I, I told her I didn't love her anymore. When I was straddling her, it was kind of like around her waist type deal. I felt like she could probably listen to me just laying beside her, but I got on top of her. And every time I think about it, I'm just like, did I know I was going to do that before I got on top of her? Really? That's an interesting thought, Chris. Mm -hmm. You don't know if you do. To straddle someone like that is to have the gravitational advantage over that other person in that elevated position. If Chris actually did what he's saying, it was done with the intent to intimidate, control, or physically hurt her. Which instinctively, Shanann would feel and would not be okay with him in that position over her just to talk. I don't even want to say it. I felt like I had to. I just felt like there was already something in my mind that was implanted that I was going to do it. And I woke up that morning, it was going to happen, and I had no control of it. Talk for about 15 minutes, and then... It's heated, and then your hands are on her neck. Okay. All right. Um, what did the talk? What, what did the talk consist of? Basically, just the, about how well, at first it was more of like the you know selling the house type of thing, or not going to Aspen, or trying to maybe go in a, at a different time, and then just switched all of them to the. I don't feel like I'm in love with you anymore. Not compatible. Like that, and that's what I got. Part of it. Did she accuse you of cheating at that point? Mm -hmm. So what'd she say? She's like, I knew there was somebody else. I knew there was somebody else. That's, I, I didn't come out to say, you know, that there is somebody else, but she obviously already knew. And your response to that was what? Did she say, no, there's not? <clears throat> Did you deny it? I believe I just denied it. This is her purse? That's her purse. It's her medication. She takes these um her medication's still in here what about the welcome to the 12 days of christmas lavelle day and even though uh i like to claim that i could probably cook i can't at all so i'm gonna let my wife do all the the cooking she's gonna make up some thrive bites for us and i'm gonna go wash my hands real fast uh-oh she's gonna be me here alone i watch videos it's like like cooking, you know, or she'd make like power balls or, you know, or like uh, protein balls or whatever. Yeah. You just don't seem like you want to be in those videos. No. Like you feel, I feel like you were being forced to be in those videos and correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, that's I, what I, it I, seemed I, like I to hate, me. I hated being in videos. I hated, I mean, I did it because for her, because right. it was for, for her business and sure. stuff, but like it was, you know, I, I didn't, I hated just being out yeah. for everybody to see. Oh, we got some people joining. Better look. Got people, got people looking at us. The gender reveal thing, I was just like, hmm, I, I didn't want it to be like some live Facebook video. Say hi. <laughs> Wife's gonna be making up some Thrive Bites here in a second, so make sure you hop on and so join us for the 12 days of Christmas. Those videos were not me. I just, I did it just, just to support her. You know, like, she would always say, oh, Could hey. you tell her no? Could you say, I don't want to be in that video? Or was that an option? I mean, it's like, you know, she would have been like, oh, what is this to, you know, help our family? This is for, you know, to help this and that. We're going to get a hold of them. We're working on all that. Understandable. Like I said, we're doing what we can to try to find her here. Uh, she got home with Nicole. He didn't say who. You were a difficult guy to read, especially at the house that day. All right, we'll keep that in mind. All right, thanks. Now, right here, watch for Chris's scared body language that Officer Coonrod may be onto him. Did you tell your mother-in-law that she went to a friend's this today? Right, his eyebrows rose sharply in fear, and then he was trying to adjust his eyebrows down to what he thought was the correct, believable body language height. Did you tell your mother-in-law that she went to a friend's this today? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who's what friend? I was to a friend's house, that's all I knew. 
who was she supposed to go to? When did she tell you that? This morning when we were talking to about 4 and 5 o'clock. Yeah, he checks in the pantry because he seems to know that Chris is not acting right at all. What are you guys saying about red on the stairwell? Like a piece of wax or something that's not blood. I don't see any signs of a struggle. Nothing's broken. I don't understand. Like her phone is her life. Right. And her purse and her wallet. This is the suitcase she had yesterday. This stuff she had last night. Yep. Yeah, we're, I'm going to try to run some things down using her phone. You can do that now. If you guys want to start that. Well, I mean, I've seen people do some really weird things. Um, you know, especially when it's just shattering news. Uh, and especially for women, it's just a little harder. I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. It's just, it is what it is. Yeah, they do some crazy things sometimes when they think they're going to change the matter in their lives. So. Alright. We'll see. We'll run it down. Thank you. Okay? Hi, sir. Here, yeah, I'm Officer James Frederick PD. What's your name? Chris We'd like to go through your house. Are you okay with yeah. us searching through your yeah. house? All right. Um, we'll have you sign a consent form. We just want to see if you left a note or anything okay. inconspicuous, something like that. Let's go grab that form. What is today, 13th? 13th. So this is a consent to search form, permission to search this house in its entirety for missing persons. Just read this bottom and make sure you understand that. Before you sign it, uh, ask me any questions, okay. if you have any, okay? 12th or 13th? Today's the 13th. Let's go. So Chris, it's your house. You can go inside with us if you'd like, or you could stay out here. It doesn't matter to us. It doesn't matter. I mean, free reign, just whatever you gotta do. Okay. Like I can show on the back on the side of the sun. But okay. Cool. All right. Whatever you'd like. How long have you guys been married? So, been together eight years. Married six this year. Okay. And this is very unusual behavior. Yeah, you get that dog out of here. Okay. She's gonna. Split. Would it show her leaving with the kids? Did you have if any she alerts? Came out, if she came out here, yes. Like, if did you have any alerts today with that? Just when her friends were here. Does it only record when the doorbell rings or anytime if someone? If you're like right, it should just start the proximity should hit up. Were you going to hang out out oh, there or you want to come in here? Okay. Where's the person? Oh my God. Whose phone is that? I believe that is his. Uh, Mom overtook hers. Is that a diary or what is that? It's for work, I believe. Like motivation stuff. It seems then that it would have had to been a, a pretty quick transition from two people talking to this, yeah. right? Is that what happened? Yeah, it was like I don't want to like trying to think of the last last things we were talking about, but it was you know like I love you, love you anymore, and then she's like you're never gonna see the kiss. As soon as she started talking like that, then it was on. Okay. But it was you saying that you didn't love her. Is that right? Okay. And her saying you're never gonna see the kids. Yeah. Okay. Since the hearing that prosecutor said it takes two to four minutes, for something like that to happen. Like why why can't I just let go? Was so, it feeling like it was in motion and you just couldn't stop it? Yeah, it was just like I don't even want to know what, what she saw when she looked back at me. Honestly. Did you look at her? What was she doing? She wasn't writing. That's completely bogus. Shanann was known to have a fiery personality. She was not a meek, quiet person at all. To just lay down and have someone take her and her unborn Nico's lives just doesn't match her personality. Who's got asthma? This is all their medication. That's yeah, the, kid. the kid? Mm-hmm. That's albuterol for a nebulizer. They are really organized people. But everything's like super organized. Oh, it's a nice house. When you guys told me like take off your shirt and stuff, check for defensive wounds, and like you know, there wasn't going to be any. She didn't fight. I don't know why. So she didn't grab. Could she grab your arms, I, or were her arms pinned down, or? I don't, not that I remember. I don't think so. I mean, I, I don't think like I moved toward my knees or, or around her arms or anything. He says she didn't try to push him off, punch at him, scratch kicking, flailing, or kneeing him in the back. She just laid there and let him do that? Yes, that's just not believable. 
sheets and the comforters. I don't see anything. It's kind of odd. Nothing's on the bed, though. Oh, that wasn't on there? No, well, this was on here. It was on there? No. He said when he left, she was in bed sleeping. She was in bed sleeping? Mm -hmm. It's just kind of like when I got on top of her and we, we started talking, it was, that was it. It's kind of like in my head, or like in the back of my head, that was going to happen. And just like at the end of the conversation, it was just like, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. I just wish I could have let go. Did it seem like it was that long, two to four minutes? How long did it seem for you? Almost kind of felt like it was, felt like it was longer almost because it felt like time was standing still. It's kind of like I just saw my life just disappearing before my eyes, but I just like I couldn't let go. It was like somebody else, like, like if you picture somebody else around you, holding your hands, holding you, keep you from not not letting go. At some point there was a statement about rage. Do you feel like you're in a rage at that point? How do you, uh, how that's the only you... way I can describe it, honestly. A snap, something out. I just, I just felt like somebody was like behind me, just like, just, I just couldn't let go. This is him trying to deflect and not take full responsibility of what happened, bogusly implying that a supernatural force was holding his hands in place, making him do the terrible thing. But if anything like that were even remotely the case, when he finally let his hands go, he would be shocked, saddened, and appalled. He would have called 911. He would have tried doing CPR. But instead, you generally know what else he does. One thing that's going on is the kids' blankets, like their binkies. That's why they won't go anywhere without them. And they are gone? Yep. Car seats are in the car, keys are in the ignition or on the center console of the car. Her cash, all of her ID, everything's still here. Phone's here. This was locked. He opened it up and let us look in here. He said to keep it locked so the kids don't come in here and make a mess. Looking water in this toilet. Really nice house, huh? So she's a stay-at-home mom? She's a stay-at-home mom, but she works from home. And she does all the work through her phone. Her phone was on this couch, turned off. They're not organized, aren't they? Like super organized. Did we go in the backyard at all, Kenny? I did not. Well, I walked around initially trying to look in. You didn't see nothing? I didn't see anything out of place, but I was more focused on looking in, not at the yard. After she was gone, it was just like, I, I didn't know what, what was going on. I was shaking. I didn't know what had happened. I didn't, know, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what I had done. I still wasn't in that right state of mind. I don't think, like, like I was in control of what I could think or what I could do at that point in time. And then the fact that she didn't scratch at you or anything, is that just because it was so powerful? I don't think it. I mean... I didn't feel like I've ever done that before, but uh -huh. I answer on anybody before, so I don't even know what kind of force I was putting on her neck. Did you cover her face at all during that time? Both hands on the neck. If it's done right, I mean, that can be a matter of seconds before someone on their carotid loses oxygen to their brain and it's out, right? Did it seem like it was that quick or, okay, maybe a minute, maybe two? Okay. Screaming? Chris is claiming no screaming, no fighting back, nothing. The way Chris is describing what happened makes absolutely no sense. Human instinct would be to survive. There would be no thinking. It would be all reactionary to survive. And Chris may bogusly defend it as, well, maybe she was just so sad that she was going to be getting a divorce from me that she just didn't want to live anymore. No, Chris, that's not how this works. Also, she's pregnant, has two little girls across the hall that would be in danger of this monster. She would want to survive even just to save their lives. So Shanann would not only have human instinct to survive, she would also have maternal instinct to survive. What Chris is describing is surely not what actually happened. We'll break down and piece together what actually seemed to happen, coming up soon. Female friend or a male friend? Honestly, I'm not going to put anything by it right now. Well, okay, hold on one second. Fight back. So she doesn't have any family or anyone around here? Neither of us do. They're all back in North Carolina. We moved here back in 2012. Came out here to visit some friends during Thanksgiving. Found love with the place. Moved out here a few months later. Have you checked your bank accounts? That's what nothing else going to do because I don't have access. Here. Let's go check those and see if she pulled any cash out or uh, if there's 
any strange charges or anything. At what point did she start crying? When I'm talking about the relationship about not being compatible, and when she's talking about uh, there's somebody else, that's where she started crying. Was there ever a, at any time a pillow or the sheet or anything involved in like that on, on her face specifically? No. The sheet uh, kind of wrapped around the get downstairs of the hood. The one that was at the site. Okay. And then the other sheets, they were in the trash. At what point did you put those in there? Obviously after I was in the house. Yeah. I think it was probably the next day or so. Okay. String us some, I don't like, sometimes I guess they used the bathroom. Hmm. So it was like, I think that one of the reasons why, because I think that had happened. Oh, okay. I was just scared about getting the sheet off the bed and she had walked in. And she had her little pink blanket with her. She'd say, what's, what's wrong? Tell me, mommy. Can I go in there and get the card? Yeah, yeah you can go in the house, yeah. yeah. You said when you left this morning, she was in bed? Yes. Were the blankets and stuff on the bed? Yes, they were. Officer Coonrod hits on one of two major red flags when investigating a missing persons case in a home. First is that the bed is stripped because a lot of domestic crimes happen in the bedroom and also bed sheets are large so they can be used in the cover-up. Second is a strong smell of bleach or cleaner when you walk into the home along with the washing machine going because they're trying to wash away the evidence. She might have wanted to wash them just because she would just go back to the airport last night. She just climbed the bed just frustrated in the airport. More trying to convince the police on something that if he were innocent, he wouldn't feel the need to convince anyone. An innocent person would say, you're right, that's weird. Why would she wash the sheets if she was mysteriously going to run away and never return? But what do you think would happen if he said that? Right, because there's so much evidence that points directly at him, by saying that would just be feeding the police extra evidence that Shanann didn't take the kids and run away. What shoes does she normally wear? Is those flip-flops? She has flip-flops there. She has flip-flops in her office. She has a whole shoe closet in there. Her shoes she wears every single day right in the front door. That's the only ones that I know of. I mean, there's any, there, there could be people that I don't know. Hi. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> I guess just call me back when you have a chance. Bye. Do you feel comfortable enough today to tell us if there were other people? Yeah, it was just Nicole. Okay. Probably around probably June 1st or something. That's when I first met her. I didn't wear a ring at work because I got something to also get refitted when I got lost all that weight. She texted me outside the field. And then after that, we just kept texting back and forth. One day, it just kind of went to a different different level. I never thought it would ever go to that level. But yeah. she was talking about meeting up after we got back from San Diego. So we're on a two-hour cruise here in San Diego. It's absolutely gorgeous here. So here's the crew. Here's Scott. We're live. Chris, somewhere. Do you know how many credit cards she actually has? Credit cards, no. We met up after we got back. After that, we just kept seeing each other in the whole month of July. What did she know about you? Did she know you were married first? She did, once I showed her the pictures. So she knew I was married with my kids. Are you aware that she said she didn't know you were married? She tried to save face. Like, she actually like asked me like, like my opinion on a lot of things, and just like what I wanted to do. And so did it feel more like an equal partnership or? It seemed like it. Yeah. No, she just wanted to walk around and just talk. And like, okay. She wanted to go to the car museum, Shelby Museum in Boulder. I've never been there. Drag race in Andamir. Camping in uh, Sand Dunes National Park. Thank you so much for coming out here with me, Christopher. I am having a wonderful time. You mean a lot to me. And I'm glad that you're having a blast. I am so out of breath. <laughs> I was there at her house pretty much every night. I was only at home from like when I got home from work. I worked out, I ate dinner, and then I went over to her house. Like I was never, I never slept in my house in like the whole month of July. And you said you went home and then you were at her house. Was that while Shanann was gone? Yes. Oh, okay. So you weren't even at your house? No. This all happened so quickly, didn't it? It, it was insane. When I was with Nikki, it was different. Like I wasn't even like, in the realm of I'm a dad, I'm a husband type thing. If I wasn't at home, like I didn't think about it. August 13th, 27 bucks at Target. See what Chris did? He's trying to throw misleading evidence at Officer Coonrod to at least temporarily exonerate himself so they focus away from his home because the more time passes, the more the evidence will fade away. That's just when it's pulling out of your account or yeah. the purchase that's, was that's, today? That's, that's pulling out of that same account. 
so uh, probably a couple days ago then. But Officer Coonrod shot that down so quickly. And Chris now looks even more guilty because the last bank charge was a couple days ago. Also, the officer feels that Chris is trying to deceive him. And if you look through here and see if all of her cards are here. He doesn't know, I how, don't many know how many she has. She has different ones than me as far as credit cards go. Do your kids have like a favorite pair of shoes that they normally wear? Favorite pair of shoes? Yeah. <laughs> Chris gives off a nervous smile when he's asked that because they weren't wearing footwear when he made them disappear this morning, so there won't be any missing in the house. Also, people, especially kids, have footwear that they wear more than others. They have all their shoes are in the closet right here. Do you know which ones they normally wear? Like, it's like whatever they want to wear, honestly. Like, whatever they want to wear, they say, I say pick your shoes and just go through them. On this side, on that side. Sure. Whether it's sneakers or sandals in the summer, it's surely very suspicious for these officers that Chris can't say what footwear they would more likely wear. Your kids take any medication? TC takes Singular and Amepazole. How often? Singular is every night for allergies, and Amepazole for the kind of for like the Reflux. Yeah, now another red flag that all their medications are still at home. I don't think these officers were prepared for the stupidity of Chris Watts because even the dumbest criminals that they encounter at least try and make their alibi seem plausible. But Chris is so much of a psychopath, he can't even think for one moment from someone else's perspective. It's shocking, but at this point, he was surely hoping he would actually get away with this. And when did you guys get back? I think it was, so it'd be, I went back to work on the 8th. So we got back on the seventh. Okay. And then she left for Arizona on Friday and got back last night. And she had the kids with her last night? Yes. Or you had the kids? Oh, I had the kids like all weekend. Okay. Yeah. The police are all looking at each other like, wait. Is this guy serious? Chris was the last person to see Shanann and the kids because remember, they weren't spotted on the security cameras either. The last person who saw the now missing people usually have the most information on their whereabouts and police know this. They went to a birthday party yesterday over at the friend's house down the street. And then, is someone sleeping in the basement? I did a few times the separation thing. I just... Yes, Chris sleeps in the basement sometimes, but here's when he sleeps in the basement. Watch. How, how recently? Probably about two nights ago, three nights ago, when she was here. That's right. The last time he slept in the basement was the last time Shanann stayed the whole night in the house. Which, yes, seems very curious of why he would innocently sleep upstairs when he knew she would be coming home that night. So, probably the last time was Thursday, Thursday night, Friday. And then your kids, do they sleep in their own beds yeah, or do they sleep, sleep with you those, guys? Those two adjacent rooms, they connect to that bathroom. You're lucky. That officer throws out a lucky comment to see if Chris bites. You're lucky. Because as you're noticing, Chris isn't acting very upset or distraught that his entire family is missing. He actually comes across as happy. <laughs> I'm going right now. So you were in that bed last night? Yeah. What do you think? Was Chris sleeping upstairs last night? Watch again. And then we'll break it down. So you were in that bed last night? Yeah. When he nods his head, he drastically sucks in his lips. Liars will sometimes suck in their lips in soothing self-comfort because of the stress of lying. Right. Yeah. And also feeling like their lips are sealed shut when they're sucked in. Here's where context comes into play when analyzing body language. Even though he clearly seems nervous and insecure about what he just said, we don't know if he's sucking in his lips because he's lying about sleeping upstairs last night or because police are getting closer to ground zero of the crime scene. Let's keep watching and see what else we can find. That was up there because the monitor and stuff was up there. I was waiting for her to get back home. Do you remember this part we played earlier? There was a lot of movement, you know, I think it was around 426. The garage door opening, the basement door opening, and then of course the living room sensors and all. Do you remember what you were doing all during that time? Do you remember going down there for anything or opening that door for anything? I don't remember about the basement. Unless there was a trash bag down there at that time. Yeah, you got trash bags in there? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Maybe there wasn't any in the garage, and I went down there and got one. Do you normally carry a roll of trash bags in your truck? No. Okay. So there was a roll in your truck? There was? Yeah. I mean, maybe I just grabbed it and brought it with me then. That would have been kept in the basement, maybe? Or the basement or the garage. Or the garage. That's right. At 4.26 a.m., there was significant movement in the basement, which Chris said it was to get trash bags to clean up the crime scene. But there's a big problem with that. Chris says he gets up for work at 4 a.m. I woke up about 4 o'clock. Yeah, it seems a little early for leaving the house between 5.30 and 6 a.m. Between 5.30 and 6. But... 
to be conservative. We'll give it to him. 4 a.m. he woke up, and in just 26 minutes, he would have had to get ready for work, get dressed, eat breakfast, pack a lunch, and then finally, when he's just about ready to leave for work, he talks to Shanann for at least 15 minutes, commits the crime, and then finally needs trash bags to clean up the crime scene? But all of that was done in just 26 minutes? Of course not. Chris is lying about what happened. Also, while we're talking about bogus timelines, if Chris was ready to leave for work, just as he started to talk to Shanann, and says he typically leaves the house between 5.30 and 6, and said he talked to her for at least 15 minutes, committed the crime, and then started to cover up the crime, we would expect him to be spotted by the neighbor's security camera well after 6 a.m., right? But when was he spotted? This is him at 5.17. His truck had the lights on, which is unusual for that point, you know, 5.15 in the morning. Only fools like me are up. <laughs> so you don't usually see him leave at that time of day? That's right, Chris Watts was spotted leaving his house early on a morning he had to do so much more than any other morning, which should have made him very late leaving the house that morning. So what does all this say? Yes, Chris Watts is lying again. Did they maybe not go to sleep at all that night and they just talked when she got home and then he committed the crime? Possibly something like that, but unlikely because lying about that does nothing for Chris. The motive for Chris to lie is to make him seem less of a monster, meaning that he would alter the story a little bit so it comes across as rage and not premeditated. But the evidence and timelines point it to being much more premeditated. This is how it could have sadly happened. Chris decides to sleep in the upstairs bedroom as he waits for her to get home that night. They may have had some version of that conversation Chris described when she got home at 2 a.m. He wakes up before she does and sees an opportunity to take his action. That would explain the timeline much better and why there was no defensive wounds on Chris. He sadly took her by surprise while she was sleeping. You went to a job site or you went to the main plant or where'd you go? I went to location first. Where was that? By, by Hudson. There. there was someone there at the time when you got there? No. There's so much more we can talk about with body language, verbal cues, and bogus things Chris says here, but we'll save all that extra detail for a more channel video. So if you're not subscribed to the more channel, you may want to do that so you don't miss out on extra insight into this video. If you hear anything from her, uh, call that number and let us know. Our main concern is to make sure she's okay and the kids are okay. Just call that number, someone will answer that phone 24-7. Okay. So. Sweet. And then just leave your contact info and an officer will call you right back. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. That's him. Hang up on me again. I keep it recording so in case he calls back and I get him. So what happened next? Is that what happened? Bill came in. What she said. Oh, mom. Mom. Did she hear something? Is that what she said? Obviously, I think. Okay. What did you tell me? Oh, good. Did you take her back to her room? Put Shannon in that sheet. Not in sight. Carried her downstairs and back my truck up. At that point, were the girls still there? Okay. And then Shannon's in the truck. Then we went back to the house. Got her bike back in the truck. So Shannon was first, and then Bella was next. Was Bella alive when you put her when you guys got in the truck? Oh, okay. What happened? I don't really want to talk about this part. Honestly. Okay. Every time I see pictures, I don't know how this could have happened. Being a dad was the best part of my life. Do you believe him? I do, but he's saying that because he's spending the rest of his garbage life in a smelly prison cell. I didn't realize how good I had it. And I'm sure you're noticing in the footage that Chris's demeanor is not somber, that his family is gone forever. And as we continue with this series, you'll notice that he only becomes emotional when he realizes that law enforcement is closing in on him and he realizes that he's going to be in prison forever. I can never, like... This is Officer Goodman, Frederick Police Department. And this is Chris Watts. On Bella, do you know her height, weight, hair color, and eyes? 42 inches, 40 pounds, brown, brown as well. And then on Celeste, same thing. 37 inches tall, 37 pounds, blonde hair, blue eyes. Making snacks and watching princess movies and those kinds of things. How you get to that point, you know? I don't know. Like I said, it was just like something else was controlling me that day. I had no control over what I was like to fight back. The whole, everything that happened that morning, I just got, I don't know, like, 
I, I try to go back in my head. I'm just like, I didn't want to do this, but I did it. Everything just kind of like... Felt like you had to? It just felt like it was... I don't even want to say it felt like I had to. It just felt like there was already something in my mind that was implanted that I was going to do it. And then I woke up that morning, it was going to happen, and I had no control of it. The whole thing of claiming temporary rage is completely bogus on so many levels. Because based on his body language, he seemed to be feeling great after he just terminated his family. Indicating he actually wanted that fresh start with his mistress, Nikki, without a wife and kids. <laughs> If it was anything like temporary extreme rage, as he's describing. Soon after they were all gone, he would surely have a moment where he would come to the realization that he terminated the people he loved most in his life. And if that was the case, we surely would have been noticing him distraught in the footage and possibly even crying to the officers that his whole family is gone. Chris would have also come across as more innocent too, because the police officers probably would have been like, oh, poor guy. He really misses his family. But we don't see any emotion from him until he finally realizes he's about to get caught because, yes, he's a psychopath and only cares about himself. Since the other officers have talked to you, has anything else come to mind that you can think of to help us try to figure out what's going on, where she is? Not, nothing's come across. There's a bunch of text messages from a lot of friends just reaching out to me. It just seems like if, if they could help or whatnot, but nothing new. Okay, yeah, well, if you hear something, um, obviously let us know as Definitely. soon as you can. And uh, if you can think of anything, if anything, you know, you think of that, that might help us locate her, um, just let okay. us know, okay? This video is the full and complete first day of the Chris Watts case. You may be wondering what Chris Watts claimed happened to his two young daughters and if he's truthful about it. Chris Watts talks about it and we'll be breaking that down in the next video in this series. We're covering the Chris Watts case in full since all the evidence is out and we could finally piece everything together to reveal the truth. Now in the comments, what would you say to Chris Watts if you were interviewing him? Is there a question you would want to ask him or is there something you want to say to his face? Let everyone know in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up if you think Chris Watts lied in his full confession. Give this video a thumbs down if you think Chris Watts was 100% truthful in his confession. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button now so you don't miss out on the rest of the series, as well as other body language and investigative videos that always seem to shake up YouTube. And I'll see you at the top.